How's it going everyone? I'm back. I'll be tying a Dave Heiss original 1991-ish the heterogeneous nymph which was designed in preparation for a trip to New Zealand and I purchased a few books because of course that was before the internet well, the internet was in the infant stages and I noticed in the books they used a lot of pheasant copper peacock and various other materials probably because that's all they had access to on the island islands um, the original version of this is actually pheasant and copper in the center third of the body. It's basically broken down into a tail. Two thirds of it of the body is the abdomen. One third pheasant, one third copper. And then the thorax section with some legs. It's kind of a cross between a pheasant tail and a brassy. There's the hook I'm using. The original was probably a Daiichi 135 or a Tamco 2457. I like this hook better. Black and barbless. The bead I'm using is a black ruby, 332nd. This is a size 14. The original had a copper bead to go along with the copper body, or the copper center third of the body. One, one difference is I use golden pheasant tail one because of the length of the barbs and two because of the coloration of the barbs just a little bit different than the ring, ring neck pheasant tail Red base. Tails in. This is small copper wire.
So again, the original version, instead of using that orange thread, I used copper wire. But anymore, I'm convinced the hot spot makes a huge difference. Which incidentally, you can tie this in a yellow during the sulfur PMD hatch. You can do it in an olive for the blue wings, betas, hatches. Obviously vary your sizes. You can do it in uh, good attractor colors, purple, blue, pink. But orange is my favorite um, trigger color. Original version had peacock for the thorax. This is actually a hairy ice stub. I believe golden brown. The standard ice stub and golden brown is good too. I was thinking about it earlier, I can't recall if ice stub was available back in the early 90s or not. Maybe somebody can correct me on that. And we can do this thorax region in a couple different ways. Could have cut this off, this piece here, and retied a new piece in, and then folded back the tips for legs, and then use this for a wing case. I've just always tied it this way. Or I use I use the uh, whole piece of pheasant tail from the tail all the way forward. And then tie my legs in at the end. Very effective on trout. Like this is one of my best selling nymphs in the shop and has been for probably 15 years as long as I've owned the shop. This pattern has been in the Falling Mill and Orvis catalog for over a quarter of a century. I don't think it's in the Orvis catalog any longer, just recently dropped. But it is still in the orbit or uh, full and mill catalog. Just an awesome pattern. You used it with great success on the South Holston, as well as many others. I've had great success with it. Um, Madison, Missouri, if you have one or ten favorite nymphs. This should be in your box as one or the ten.
I like to tie those in and then fold them back. And that locks them in place. Sometimes they like to splay as those did. But again, it's been around since 91. I think the Copper John went mainstream in 94. Again, thanks for being in here. Uh, please subscribe. Heterogeneous nymph. A little bit of resin or super glue to lock it in place. Cheers.